Thank you. The, the purpose of this briefing is to provide you an update in respect to the murders of Carly and Candelise. And it's my intention to tell you as much as I can, but there's certainly um, quite a lot of things that I won't be able to discuss with you today. But in due course, um, um, we may be able to. We've been receiving overwhelming support from the community and the media throughout Australia, and that's been of considerable assistance to the investigation. And every day the investigation has found out more and progressed substantially. Um, Task Force Mallee from South Australia is now working um, in formal arrangements with New South Wales Strike Force Malaya, and both of us are working together and progressing the investigation as one. We have a strong leadership team drawn from people from both agencies, and our operations inspector is currently co-located with the New South Wales Police. As you know, this is a challenging and complex investigation um, with murders that have occurred in places which we are not yet aware of and up to 10 years ago and across um, many states. Over the past two days, we've searched a number of homes, both in South Australia and Canberra, and those premises belong to people associated with Carly and Candelise in some way. I can't go into specifics of what the results of those searches um, have been, but I can say that those searches have been extremely productive and have advanced the investigation. We're continuing to work effectively and efficiently across the country, and things are progressing really well. But it's a very, very fast-paced investigation with lots of challenges. And um, the process of evaluating and continually um, resetting the direction is an ongoing thing and, and that has an impact on what we can tell you and when we can tell you things. One of the key things to the success of this investigation is for us to avoid um, unnecessary speculation, for us to avoid potentially telling you something which isn't true and for that reason um, we won't speculate on different things and we won't tell you things until we're 100% certain that what we're saying is correct. I can confirm for you that we do have very strong lines of inquiry and there is every indication that family or friends or people associated, correction, that friends and associates of Carly and Candelise um, may provide the clues that help us solve this. Um, clearly we have suspects because we've done searches but again we caution against speculation because in the past we have had several suspects in the Task Force Mallee investigation and they were quite strong suspects and at the end of the investigation it amounted to nothing and they were eliminated. Our focus at the moment is to progress the investigation, to make sure that everything we do is focused and on track and to build a strong case against those who may be responsible for this. <coughs> we're still urging anybody with information um, to contact us and, and to contact us through Crime Stoppers wherever they are in Australia and certainly the landlords, motel operators, hotels, caravan parks and the like, um, we still encourage those people to check their records and to contact us. I'm happy for a few questions. Jeff, Jeff Bray, what can you tell us about the SMH story overnight that um, police are investigating a prisoner in New South Wales? We won't talk about any particular um, suspect and speculate about different suspects, but I can tell you that we are looking at um, more than one person. Superintendent, the, the reports today uh, about New South Wales detectives were focusing on um, several suspects within New South Wales prisons. Um, Matt had links with a local area. Uh, are South Australian detectives doing the same type of thing here? In, I, know, I know you don't want to speculate, but in terms of, of looking at inmates in South Australian prisons, as they're doing in New South Wales. I can tell you that nothing has been done in New South Wales or in South Australia or anywhere in Australia that the leadership team of the investigation aren't aware of. Um, but I can tell you that we won't say anything in relation to um, individual suspects except to say that there are clearly, we are looking at the possible involvement of more than one person and that's evident by the fact that we're doing search warrants across Australia. And that's across, across different states? Yes. So do you believe a group may have been responsible for this? Um, 
the involvement of people is yet to be determined, and it's yet to be de determined and confirmed that more than one person is responsible, but there's certainly a need for us to look at more than one person. Do you think that it may have been uh, someone who she was involved with romantically, an ex-boyfriend, or any suggestions of that? Um, it wouldn't be helpful for us to speculate about that because um, we've obviously got ongoing inquiries in relation to a number of people. Can you shed anything on why you think it might be more than one person or is it that you just can't rule it out? Uh, it's that I just really can't tell you. Um, but, um, I mean, you can take some confidence in the fact that we have a very strong focus for this investigation. And we have very strong lines of inquiry and um, we've had detectives in five different uh, states conducting interviews and we've executed search warrants in a number of states. So past that, I can't say much more, except that those searches and those inquiries are really helping us to progress the investigation. Very strong lines of inquiries suggest it may not be too long. Is that a fair reading of what you're saying? Um, things can change very quickly, but I'd suggest to you that this is more of a marathon than a sprint. Superintendent, you said uh, that there was a, some, uh, I suppose, there's a lot of theory that the body in the Blake West Act Forest may have been dumped there to put you guys off the track. Do you think the same thing applies to little girls' remains of Wanaka that, uh, that also could have just been dumped randomly um, to put you guys off the track? It's, it's difficult to know because um, Carly and Candelise were a very, very long way apart, but um, we know that um, Carly's body being found in Belangelo has nothing to do with the previous crimes. Um, and it is reasonable to assume that one theory could be that it was to throw us off track, but again, that's not certain. But that's about the only theory I would be happy to speculate on. Are you able to give us an indication as to where the raids happened in South Australia? Um, just really in Adelaide and um, Canberra. I'm not really prepared to go past that. Can you tell us what the relationship of those people were with Colin? No. Can you tell us what you found? Um, no, except to say that we have found things and the searches have produced things which we think will help us to progress the investigation. So we're very happy with the outcome of the searches. Have we given you an indication as to where the murders might have happened? Um, no, we don't have any certainty around um, where and exactly when the murders happened or what the motive may be. Has there been any further information about the 60-year-old um, uh, man carrying the suitcase? There was a lot of reports we said about that. Have you the 60 year old uh, man with the suitcase um, was of greater interest perhaps earlier on but we've been able to establish now that that man's been seen um, in that area before the suitcase was discovered um, by people traveling that road and he, he continued to be seen after carrying his suitcase up and down the road after the suitcase had been recovered so um, I think that person is largely irrelevant but we would like to know who he is so that as a matter of completeness we can find out who he was and if he saw anything or if he ever touched the suitcase, for example. Does you have any suspicions at all that there may be more murders linked to this investigation? It's really hard to say that because we've got these two murders are definite murders and the people who commit these crimes, uh, you know, such evil, horrible people, um, you know, you have that in the back of your mind but we don't have any proof of anything like that. Can you just clarify um, the last sighting of, uh, of uh, Carly, when, when it actually was, uh, because it was, we, we heard it's November or 2008 in Cooper is that, is that what they still believe? Or? Look, I'll check the date again for you just to make sure I'm right, but she saw her friend in early um, November 2008, and it was about the 8th of November, um, the last sighting, but I can check that um, and confirm in case anything's changed in the investigation. Um, okay. since I was last updated. And have any of her friends or associates in the last couple of days, have they provided any more clarity around when she might have last been seen alive? We, um, we're having lots and lots of information come in from really across Australia, certainly information from um, the places where she lived, and there's so much information coming in, it's really staying on top of it, and you know it could change from hour to hour. So, um, I can't tell you exactly as I'm standing here what's changed um, since my last um, briefing this morning. But do you now have a better understanding of when they may have been murdered? Uh, 
We think that the most likely time of the murder is in December of 2008. Last question. Um, so the, one of these last known sightings of the photo that was taken was at the Marion Shopping Centre. Were any of the raids, and I don't want to comment too much, but were any of the raids done in the vicinity of that area or houses in, in the Adelaide South? No.